Hello everyone and welcome to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson. Today we are doing our 50,000 subscribers Q&A video. We put out a short recently asking for questions and I put out a post on LinkedIn asking for questions and you guys delivered. Thanks so much for sending in your questions and we're gonna answer them in this video. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's dive right into our first question. This first question comes to us from YouTube and it was left on the shorts for the 50K Q&A announcement. I'm a mechanical engineer. I'm very interested to learn about electronics and PCB design, single and multi-layer PCB. How do I start my journey? Well, you've already subscribed to the channel, so that's a great first step. The other thing you can do is subscribe to folks like Phil Salmony. He's also an Altium contributor. Also, make sure to check out the Altium blog. I post there all the time. There are tons of resources to help you as a beginner and to help you learn about advanced designs. And last but not least, find some great examples that you can reverse engineer and learn from. I learned by looking at examples. They showed me how to lay out components, how to do routing, what a professional PCB should look like, and what typical stack ups look like. So find some examples on GitHub. You can also use the projects that we've shown in other videos. Our next question comes from LinkedIn. Mohammed writes, Zachariah, congrats. We used to think about electron flow or current flow and voltage difference for a long time. Then a few years ago, we started to know it's not electrons flow, it's electromagnetic field that carries energy between traces. The question is, how do you best explain that electromagnetic field? I'm looking for something that's analog to electron flow with respect to our imagination. While it's true that electrons do not flow along a trace, current does appear on a trace in relation to the electromagnetic field in that the electromagnetic field generates a current and a current generates an electromagnetic field. This self-reinforcing disturbance is what creates an electromagnetic wave with a specific wavelength in space. So you have to have current on a conductor in order to have a magnetic field and an electric field that are then oscillating in time. So you can't have one without the other. The reason current appears to flow along a trace is because the electromagnetic disturbance that travels around a trace generates a current as it travels. And it's that generated current that moves along with the electromagnetic wave. Once the current slash electromagnetic wave reaches the receiver end of that interconnect, it then propagates into the receiving integrated circuit, and you have the same process occurring inside of that integrated circuit. Hopefully that's a good explanation and it clears up some of that misconception. This next question also comes from LinkedIn. This one comes from Pratik Chakraborty. Pratik writes, that's a great feat for a deserving one like you, sir. Keep us enlightened through your knowledge and guidance. Well, thanks, Pratik. I have one request to you if possible. Can you discuss about various simulation software in the market which we can use for simulation and measurement of signal integrity in a PCB layout, either free or paid? Thank you, sir. Big fan of your work. Simulation software is pretty specialized, so it usually is paid, but there is one open option or free option that you can get, which is Open EMS. Open EMS is a free electromagnetic field solver, and it's something that I'm still learning, so I don't want to comment too deeply on its capabilities. However, there are other designers that I know that use it very extensively, and they love it. For paid software, my go-to solution is Symbior, just because it's a very fast and easy to use solution for transmission lines and linear networks. When I need to solve a more complex problem or I need to go into 3D, I'll use either ANSYS or CST. Typically I'm doing this with RF designs, so I'll use HFSS. For signal integrity in digital systems, I like ANSYS SI Wave. SI Wave is great because it automates a lot of the analysis that is more difficult to do in something like Open EMS. Another great solution is Keysight Pathwave ADS. Now, I've never used Pathwave, and if anyone from Keysight is listening, maybe you could hook it up with a demo. But Keysight is a great tool for simulation, and there are a lot of people out there who swear by it. So that's another one to check out if you're looking for a paid solution that is competitive with the other options I listed. This next one comes from Wasim Alkair from my LinkedIn followers. Wasim writes, Zachariah Peterson, congrats on this nice milestone. My question, what books would you recommend on RF and high-speed PCB design? For RF design, I would recommend David Posar's textbook. David Posar's Microwave Engineering textbook is a great resource for people who want to learn basic concepts in RF systems design, as well as some of the common circuits and termination techniques, transmission lines, schemes, things like this that you might need to use in an RF system. For high-speed digital design, definitely go with the Black Magic textbooks from Howard Johnson. 
Those are a bit older, but they are still relevant even today. And he provides a lot of depth, including the mathematical depth that I think PCB designers should know. Now, most of you should know that I'm actually a physicist by education, not an engineer. And so I would tell people to go and learn David J. Griffiths to learn about electromagnetics. Electromagnetics is a very important part of PCB design, especially if you're doing anything with signal integrity, power integrity, high-speed digital, and RF. So I think it's very important to know those fundamental concepts from David J. Griffith's classical electrodynamics. Then you can graduate onto something involving boundary value problems. There's a Springer textbook that I will link in the description. That textbook goes over how to solve boundary value problems that are very important in many electromagnetic systems, including with transmission lines and waveguides and unique interconnects. Another great one is Grounds for Grounding, a circuit to system handbook. This is written by Elia Jofi and Kai Sang Locke. This book is also a textbook and it focuses more on system level design. However, as many of you know, PCB design is really about integrating an assembly into a larger system. And this book will help you understand some of the fundamental concepts needed to integrate a PCB into a larger electrical system. And finally, the last book I would like to recommend is written by the late, great Ralph Morrison. The book is titled Fast Circuit Boards Energy Management. This book is specifically about high-speed PCB design, and there are many more experienced designers than myself who swear by this textbook and who highly regard the experience and knowledge of Ralph Morrison. So go check out that book. You can find a link to that book and all of the books I just mentioned in the description. Next, we've gotten a lot of questions about Circuit Studio. Now, Circuit Studio, as some of you may know, is basically like a light version of Altium Designer. Now, I'll just answer all of these questions by saying this. I don't know the level of support that Altium is currently offering for Circuit Studio. However, if you want Altium to continue offering support and updating Circuit Studio, I would advise you to go to the support forum and ask your questions there. Those guys are very responsive and they would be willing to give you some more knowledge than I can. This next question comes from our NRF52 layer reduction video. Blanche Hermine writes, now do it in two layers. Tell you what, Blanche, you do it in two layers. You can access the original files for that project on the original video, and you can do whatever modifications you want to that project, including reducing the layer count down to two layers. If you can reduce the layer count down to two layers, I'll review the design in our one minute design review series. Our next question comes from LinkedIn. Congrats, what was the first PCB you designed? So I originally talked about this when I was a guest on the podcast when Judy Warner was hosting. So my first PCB that I designed was not a professional PCB at all. It was actually just an interface board for an amplifier and some DC voltage connections that I needed for an environmental system I was working on when I was a grad student. The board was not pretty. It was done on perf board. There was a lot of hand soldering. And honestly, it was my first time soldering as well. So it was a little messy, but it worked. It got me the measurements that I needed. And I was able to prove that the sensor I was working with was not as good as everyone thought it was. Turns out that some NO2 sensors are actually humidity sensors too. These next questions come from LinkedIn. Hey Zach, I have two questions for you. First one, where did you learn how to design PCBs and what was your motivating factor? What is your proudest accomplishments with respect to PCB design? So I described how I learned in one of the earlier questions. I really found great examples that were easy for me to understand conceptually and easy to reverse engineer. I also read a lot, and I mean a lot online, got a few books, made sure to follow the right people and listen to what they had to say about contemporary issues in PCB design, including high-speed design and RF design. Now with my background, it was a lot easier for me to get into RF design simply because it's so similar to what we have to do in optics. Well, aside from working with Altium for so many years and doing all the conference presentations I've gotten to do over the years, I would say my proudest accomplishment to date is being awarded an NSF grant alongside one of my clients for a unique RF imaging system. We worked really hard on this first round of the imaging system and eventually we were awarded an NSF grant after a year of waiting and it's finally happened. So this just happened this last month and we're jumping right into the next generation of this design. And now for our final question, also coming from LinkedIn. What is the dumbest engineering mistake you've made? Well, I'll be honest, I've made my fair share of dumb engineering mistakes. I've put too much power into meters and blown meters. I've put too much power into boards and blown up boards. But probably the dumbest engineering mistake that I've made was when I was trying to hook up AC power to a pump. What I needed to do was cut an AC power cord and strip some of the wires so that I could hook up power to this pump. And it was one of these 
AC power cords that actually plugs into the wall. Unfortunately, when I cut this power cord, I didn't realize that it was still plugged into the wall. That's what I like to call real-time arc welding. I blew a hole through those scissors and gave myself a nice shock in the process. So the moral of the story is, make sure that power cord that you need to cut is unplugged. The next Q&A video that we do will be at 100K, and you can help us get there by subscribing if you're not subscribed already. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave your comments and questions in the comment section, and of course, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks. Thanks, everybody.